Hey everyone, welcome back. This video we are going to be talking about void functions as well as functions that call other functions. So what exactly is a void function? First, this is the function we created in the last video. You can see it has a return type of integer. This means it's taking some data, it's calculating something, and then it returns the value. So you could say that it's basically calculating something. Well, a void function in general is not used to calculate something, rather it's used to do something. So for example, if you wanted to create a function to do some logging, or if you wanted to create a function to just do some console outputs, this is typically where a void function would come in. So it's not so much the case that you never want to output inside of functions. Like in the previous video, I mentioned you don't want to do console logging inside of functions. That's not entirely true. You, you just don't want to use console logging inside of functions that are not designed to do console logging. So like this factorial function, for example, the only reason you would ever want to do a printf statement in here is if you were debugging the, the function and you just wanted to output some progress to see how it was going through the, the code. Or you could use some debugging tools, which we're not going to get into right yet. But in general, you keep the functions focused on one thing. And then if you wanted to create a function to do some logging or some console outputting, then you would make a void function to do something like that. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to create a void function and we're going to call it output. Now let's make that lowercase factorial. And this is going to take an integer and in we can just call that input. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to, to basically take this printf statement and do it inside of a function. Thus we can make the, the printf statement a little bit more complicated. And if we wanted to print multiple factorials, we wouldn't have to keep repeating the same printf statements. We could just call this output, output factorial function numerous times. So like, let's say we wanted to say, here, let's just, uh, let's just start inside this function. We're gonna have an input. So let's just say the factorial of, and we're going to put input there, is, and then we're going to put the factorial of the function there. And then we're going to put a new line. Then we just put a comma, input, and then we call the factorial of input. And here you can see that we're actually calling a function within a function, and that's totally okay to do. So let's compile, make sure we got everything working and it works. And you can see that there's no return statement in here. So this one has a return. This one has no return. Now you can use the return statement inside of these functions, but you're not going to attach anything after it. So for example, you could say if something then return, which basically just means, Hey, we want to end the function. Can you please, can you please stop running? <laughs> so you could do something like that. And then if this evaluated true, you can exit the function, but you're never going to return something like input because that's saying, Hey, we're passing an, a, an output, which we're actually not because it's a void function. So if you tried to compile this, you can see that it should not return a value. So we don't want to do that. Now, instead of doing the print statements in here, we could just say, Output factorial five. Sometimes you're going to want to do this. Typically, I'll do something like this. I'll make I'll make a function to do some more complicated printing statements if I need to regularly output the values of something, just to make my life a lot easier. But you don't have to do this every single time you want to print anything. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Let's compile this and see if it works. The factorial of five is 120. Now, if we wanted to calculate other things, much simpler. Factorial of eight is whatever that is. And we could even do a loop. Like that. There we go, we can calculate the factorial from zero all the way up to nine. 